Chapter 4, Section 18, QQ Plot The QQ Plot is a technique for visually checking whether data follow a particular probability distribution. The plot compares observed quantiles called empirical quantiles and theoretical quantiles of the data. We can use the QQ plot as a visualization tool to detect outliers. This section describes how to create a QQ plot using the data we utilized in the previous section. The basic procedure is calculate empirical quantiles. Calculate theoretical quantiles, create QQ plot, and interpret the results. The first step is to calculate the quantiles based on the observed data. This is done by arranging the data in ascending order and calculating the quantiles based on the corresponding positions. First, arrange the data in ascending order. Then, calculate the probability corresponding to the rank i of the data. In a QQ plot, the position of each data point relative to the whole is expressed as a probability to identify the quantile point of the data. For example, given 10 data points, the smallest data point corresponds to a probability of 0.05, and the second, corresponds to a probability of 0.15. This is calculated by this formula. Here, i is the rank of the data. It starts from 1. And n is the number of data points. For this data, n equals 10. So, the probability corresponding to each data partition can be computed in this way. Next, calculate the theoretical quantiles. In this example, we assume that the data follows a normal distribution and calculate the quantiles based on the standard normal distribution. For a standard normal distribution, we can use the inverse cumulative distribution function to calculate the quantiles corresponding to the probabilities pi. For example, for p1 equals 0 0.0909, we can calculate the z-score, that is, inverse CDF value corresponding to that probability. We can find these z-scores using statistical tables or Python functions. These are the theoretical quantiles based on the assumption that the data follows a normal distribution. To create a QQ plot, we plot the empirical quantiles against the theoretical quantiles, that is, observed values against z-scores from the normal distribution. The horizontal axis represent the theoretical quantiles. The vertical axis represent the empirical quantiles. If the data follows a normal distribution, the points on the QQ plot will line up along a theoretical straight line. And this enables us to visually check how close the distribution of the data is to the normal distribution. If the data follows a normal distribution, the data points are aligned along the theoretical straight line. That is, the observed quantile points and the theoretical quantile points are nearly coincident. If the data deviates from the normal distribution, the points will deviate from the straight line. In this case, one of the data points with a large value widely deviates from the straight line. Therefore, it is possible to consider this data point as an outlier. Let's look at the code to create a QQ plot. Import NumPy and Matplotlib. In addition, we import SciPy stars to create a QQ plot. 
The data is the one we used in the previous section. It is already sorted in ascending order, but when it is not sorted, you need to do it. After setting the figure size, draw a QQ plot with the probe plot function. The first argument is the dataset. The second argument, this, means distribution. Since here we compare our data with a normal distribution, we should set this to norm. The third argument, plot, is set to plt so that the plot is drawn in matplotlib's plt. Then set title and access levels to display the QQ plot. The QQ plot can be used as a tool to visually check whether data follows a particular theoretical distribution, especially a normal distribution. For data that follows a normal distribution, the points on the plot will line up along a theoretical straight line. However, if there are outliers where the data deviates from the distribution, the points will widely deviate from the straight line. We can use the QQ plot not only to confirm the distribution of the data, but also as a means of identifying outliers. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Your feedback is always appreciated.